Uh, yeah, that's sad. Yeah, give you more chance <laughs> to introduce yes. your work. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't like good. that 15 minutes, like um, APS meeting or something like that. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, and uh, two minutes uh, for discussion. Something yes. like 15 minutes, I think. 12 minutes. So uh, we, we should give people more chance to introduce yes. their work. So that's what yes. my idea is. That we don't you know, need the that. Most, the most important part is that, you know, I will talk about that that I want to use your method, you know, Vortex method in my work in the future. Oh, sounds good. So uh -huh. for this reason, it is something very interesting. Uh, oh, see. yeah, you can do all the level. This workshop not limited to the, you know, Lutex, any Vortex method are welcome. Yeah. Yes. Don't worry about it. I hope, I hope more people, you know, can use our method, but it, yeah, it is, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. Yes, so how to call you? Uh, you are Professor Rezi or? Yes, I am uh, adjunct professor to be exact in uh, San Jose State. Okay, so no, uh, how to call your last name? The last time uh, is- uh, Razi, you know, call it me Razi. Razi. Yes, Razi. I know you uh, uh, You may have other jobs somewhere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so, okay, what's the chairman? <laughs> mm -hmm. Dr. Wang's here? Yeah, we're almost time. Yeah. Oh, hello, hello. Yeah. Dr. Liu, uh, I'm the uh, chairman. Oh, you're the chairman. Uh, okay. uh, uh, I'm Jian Song Chu. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, uh, it sounds uh, good. Uh, we have one minute. <laughs> uh, uh, should okay. I make sure the first speaker is here. The speaker is here. Hello. Yes. The chairman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I can. I can. All right. I'm gonna turn on my camera. Sure. Okay. Oh. Can oh. you all see my camera? Oh. Okay. I can. I can. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen if I can. Uh. Oh my God, sorry, there's like a Mac thing. I have to restart the app for me to share my screen. I'm gonna exit the meeting and then I'm gonna rejoin very quickly. All right. Hello? Hello, hello. Okay, on okay, the top okay. right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, welcome. Um, let's see how I share my uh, screen. And near the knee, no, it is yeah. show the share okay. on the. Can you guys top. see the PowerPoint? Of, uh, yeah. Can you guys all see the PowerPoint? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna start now. Yeah. Well, my name is Paul Chim. Uh, I'm an undergrad uh, student at Imperial College London. Uh, I'm not really like technically a physics person, so if I made any uh, mistake related to physics aspect of my work, please do correct me. And we have a very long uh, title here, Modeling of Renal Stress and Isotropy by Neural Network and Random Forest with uh, low text written induced quantities and inputs. Uh, hopefully in the end of the presentation, these all make sense. And yeah, let's start the report. Uh, I break the report into the following sections. In the introduction, I will be breaking down the problem and I'm gonna show you guys what the problem is and the intuition behind the problem. And in the second part, because we're doing machine learning, we want to have some data for to, to back it up. And we're going to talk about how do we select the features uh, from the data? How do we select the data set we're using? And in the third part, which is called the AI models, I'm going to, this is going to be the big part of my uh, presentation. I'm going to talk about two machine learning models, namely uh, feed for neural network and random forest regressor. And in the fourth part, I'm going to show you the results generated from the models. And in the end, I'm going to give a brief conclusion of 
what is going on. Um, OK, center the problem breakdown. I'm pretty sure this family, uh, you guys are very familiar with the Reynolds average Navier strokes equation. Um, and what is the something that is special about this equation is the Reynolds stress tensor. That's the where everyone is more interested in, and it's of great significance to solving the equation. And our uh, primary focus of the problem is to try to, you know, figure out a way where we can get closer and to, to sort of model this Reynolds stress tensor. And the intuition behind this, right, is that studies have shown that there's a subtle relation between Reynolds stress tensor and isotropy term and the tensor itself. So that gives us the thought that, OK, maybe the anisotropy term is also very important. We can sort of use by modeling uh, the anisotropy term, we can sort of get closer to actually modeling uh, the uh, the actual tensor itself. And then from there, we can go to solve the equation more efficiently and with more accuracy. And this is what we're going to do. So here's the um, diagram for that. Not really making much sense, but yeah. And OK, we're going to do this with machine learning because machine learning is very popular and powerful these days. I'm going to give you guys um, a quick go through of what machine learning actually is. Uh, yeah, let's start. If you wish, if you think about machine learning model as this computer image in the middle of the page. So what machine learning does is it you know in like if you are training a machine learning model you want to have some numerical values input as the input you feed these numerical values into the model and the model is going to predict something and you use the prediction to sort of figure out okay how good am i doing how good is the model doing am i doing good am i doing bad if i'm doing bad i might need to update something with the model, the, the, the details of the model to make it better. And then ultimately, we hope that um, this model is going to produce the uh, anisotropy return given the input data. Uh, one thing I want to mention is I uh, the way I think about machine learning models is to, to, to visualize, visualize it as a series of uh, matrices because a series of tensor because if you think about a matrix as a, as a function then uh, machine learning at, at its essence is basically matrix multiplication if you multiply the the matrix the, the learning model represents to the input matrix and then that's going to give you sort of the, the output matrix, uh, which in the, in our case is not going to be the anisotropy term because the anisotropy term is too complex for a model to predict. That's basically not worthy. Um, we're going to use some sort of mapping between the um, our output to, to the anisotropy term and to simplify the problem. And uh, we'll, we'll get into details of that later. So let's just move on now. Here we're going to introduce our uh, great data set that we're using. It's called the DNS benchmark data set. And I have linked in the paper that describes the data set and as well as the, the homepage for that data set for anyone who is interested, who want to sort of use some machine learning with the, um, the data. I highly recommend that we use this data set. Uh, the data set consists of like 20, 29 simulations with different geometries or at a Reynolds number, Reynolds number of 5,600. 5, and let's take a glimpse at the raw data. Okay, uh, this is the screenshot I have in my uh, Python notebook. And uh, you can see the X and Y here represents the coordinates of the measurement and then all the other um, physics quantities like u-means, v-means are taken. 
one thing we want to really focus here is the shape of this whole thing. As you can see here, it's like 98,688 rows times 15 columns. If you visualize this, let's say we're going to use this as the input matrix, then the, the shape of the input matrix is basically this, but we are not because this raw data is too big. And if we use this for the input data, it's going to cost it's going to be time consuming as well as uh, memory consuming. We want to transfer this to something else that really summarize the data and to summarize like summarize the trend inside the data and try really trying to sort of abstract the, the content of the data out. That's what we're going to do with our data preparation. So data pre-processing. Here, allow me to introduce the, the amazing non-dimensional features. I, I, I tend to call this Q values because it starts with a Q. It is introduced by uh, these fellas in 2017 in the paper of, uh, in this paper. And it's something like that. Okay, I'm not gonna read the whole thing because I am incapable of explaining all this to you guys because I'm not a physics person. But, um, what I know about these data is that these features can sort of capture the essence with the essence of the data inside the it sort of comprehends or summarize the uh, the trend within the, the the flow data and then sort of extract the features out and if you're training with all these q values features it's going to be more efficient and your model is going to generate better result. Uh, okay, and this is not enough for our uh, data set because it's too little. Remember, like in previous slides, we have each row, we have like 15 um, features. Now we only have like one, two, three, four, or five. We wanted something more. And uh, by the way, the, the, these features which were chosen are only a subset of what is introduced in their type paper. So if you're interested in all these quantities, you, should, you really should check it out. And OK, and the other thing we want to include is, of course, the LeoTeX. Uh, I, I uh, included uh, 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 the, the formula for LeoTeX, and uh, I'm pretty sure everybody here knows this equation better than I do. So I'm going to skip the um, explanation for this. Um, Okay, now let's have a quick recap of what's going on for the input data. If you remember, this is like the raw data. I shrink the image so it fits in the small space I arranged it. Uh, just to uh, refresh your memory, it's of shape 98,688 times 15. We want to transfer that to something like this. Right, and it's of, of course, it's of shape uh, um, 98,688 times six. And what we do is for each row in the data set, we have like this number of rows. For each row, we want to transfer these, we want to use the data, data of the row data to calculate Q1, Q4, Q6, Q7, Q10, and real text according to the formula we give them um, in previous slides. and. Those results and like we trans we sort of do a function mapping from this each the, the row to like the row of that. So we have instead of like the, having the raw data as the input, we have something that's able to capture the um, the, the features of the data as the input. And then we're gonna feed this into our model. Okay. Um, what's next? Okay, now it's time to sort of talk about what is the output. Remember, like in the very beginning when I was trying to introduce machine learning, I said we're not going to predict the, the an isotropy term right away because it's too complex. We want to simplify the problem. We want to do something that is uh, uh, that is more comprehensive and more and easier to predict. So that's going to be a coordinate in the bar centric triangle plot. What a bar centric triangle plot does, it's, it encloses the physically realizable Reynolds stresses tensor. 
And for each position in the biocentric triangle represents the component componentality um, of the rate of stress and isotropy. So if we are, let's say we have a coordinates uh, approaching to this tip of the three, this the three C tip, this three component isotropic tip, that means like if we are trying to get the uh, lambda values from the uh, uh, from the Reynolds stress and isotropy tensor, they're going to be all zero. The same here, if we are approaching to like this two C tip, two of the lambda values going to be zero, and the coordinates that we generated are used uh, from the lambda values uses these formulas and. If we were to plot one single file of the data set, like we choose a file from the entire data set and use that for the training, and we want to plot what is the actual function we are trying to simulate, it's going to be something like this. Right. As you can see, it's well, the, the data points all fit nicely within the triangle, and it's quite a complex function to simulate, to be honest. That's why we need to. Uh, machine learning to help us with that. And now it's going to be the big part of my presentation, which is the, the introduction of the machine learning part. Um, I'm going to talk about random forest regressor first. Um, so to be able to understand a forest, we might want to first understand like a tree, right? Because forest smoke is basically a bunch of trees. That's why we're going to talk about decision tree. I'm just going to pop all these stuff up so I can have this diagram to illustrate the thing. Um, just pre knowledge for um, some basic knowledge for you guys if you guys are not aware. Uh, the, the first node inside this the, the tree is called the root node, and you can also call this the parent node of. The, the two nodes that's below it, and the, 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 these two nodes are the child nodes of the parent node of the, the root node. And for uh, each node that doesn't have a child node, like these three are called the leaf nodes. Okay. Um, so in each node that is not a leaf node, we're going to have some sort of decision within that node. For example, if you remember, we have this Q values, right? Let's just let's use Lotex as an example. Lotex is a numerical value, and okay, I'm gonna say in these root node is Lotex greater than five, something like that. Just the arbitrary example. Um, is Lotex greater than five? If something that is true that satisfies this condition, they're gonna go to the right of the right branch of this thing, and then if it's that's false, you're gonna go to the left branch. And by the way, every leaf node is, doesn't consist, it doesn't have a condition no more. Instead, it's the numeric, this one of the results that we are trying to produce. It's if you're not thinking about regression problem, which means predicting numerical continuous values, you're thinking about uh, classification classification problem, each leaf node is gonna be class you're predicting. If we're in a regression problem, we're trying, it's just the values we're predicting. And if you and and for each data sample, we're going to sort of traverse the tree, and then it will end up being one of these leaf um, node, and the content of the leaf node is going to be the result we predict. Um, the way we build the tree, that's the, like the essence of random forest, is try by trying to maximize information gain, and information the IG information gain is the formula described as this, and the, the reason why we're trying to do this is because we want the, the decision tree to try to, to sort of try to better understand, to try and understand the data set as much as possible. So that's why we use this information gain. Information gain basically means, okay, if I'm going to build this node here, how much information I get from building that node? And the fashion a build the, the the algorithm builds the tree is like I start from the root node. I'm gonna try okay if no as low tax greater than five, I'm going to try this. If that's the case, I'm gonna calculate my information gain from building this node here. And I'm gonna try other possibilities. I'm gonna try like as low tax greater uh, smaller than zero. Okay, I'm gonna go build then build the 
uh, information, uh, calculate the information again from that possibility. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna compare the two and choose the one with the highest information gain. That's gonna be the node we built in. Uh, we do this, we, 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 the algorithm does this using all combinations. So it's not gonna be like one, only one comparison between two possibilities. It's gonna be like thousands of comparisons and then trying to figure out, really trying to figure out the the best strategy to build the tree to maximize information gain. Okay, that's. I hope that all makes sense. Um, once we understand the decision tree, we might want to move into what is a random forest. I'm going to do do it faster because we're running out of time. Um, okay, what is a random forest? Um, the random the name the random. Thing, the word comes from bootstrapping the data set. Bootstrapping basically means I'm gonna, I have this data set, original data set. I want to fake it. I want to make a fake one of the original data set. I do this by uh, eliminating some of those data samples inside the data set. And at the, at the same time, I may try and create duplicate uh, data set, data samples within the data set. And in this way, I sort of generate a new fake data set from the original data set. Let's say if we bootstrap 100 data sets from the um, original data set. And for each data set, I'm going to su select a portion of the features we included as the input data. If you remember, we have like Q1, Q2, Q4, Q6, Q7. I'm going to, let's say for this data set, I'm going to select like only Q1 and Leo text. For the next one, I'm going to select like Q1, Q4, and Q6, something like that. So it adds more randomness into the process of generating the thing. And for each data feature that I generated randomly, I selected randomly, I'm going to build a decision tree from that uh, using what we talked about in the last slide. And that's why, uh, let's say we, we have a, a hundred fake data set. In the end, we're going to get a hundred uh, decision tree. And when we try, when we have a new data sample, we just feed that data sample into all the, the decision tree, all the 100 decision trees. That's going to give us 100 um, outputs. And then we basically take the mean of all these outputs, and then the final outcome is going to be the output. It's going to be our prediction. <clears throat> um, that's basically all about random forest. Now let's move on to the training details of the random forest. You can see, okay, we can specify the number of trees and then we can also specify the number of maximum features we're gonna choose from each data set. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna speed run this, speed run this. Okay, uh, then we're gonna talk about the feed forward neural network. What it does, what each layer of a neural network does is trying to simulate this function. Y hat equals WX plus B beta and W is like a matrix of weights and beta is like the, well, it's also a matrix. Uh, each layer of the network consists of the, the weights inside the W and the beta. And then you can see these X as the input matrix and this Y hat as the prediction output. And you remember when I talked about machine learning, I said, we're gonna, we're gonna find a way to figure out, okay, how is the machine, oh, how is the machine learning model work doing? Is it doing good? Is it doing bad? We used, we, we, we solved the problem by using a uh, loss function. In this case, it's the MSE mean squared error loss. It's basically, okay, I have this prediction and I have the real value. I, I subtract the prediction from the real value. I take, uh, I calculate the square of that and then I find out the mean of everything. And here's a graph of the MSE. You can see that if I'm something, I'm somewhere, uh, if you guys can see my cursor, if, if currently my model is somewhere here, I want to approach to the very end to minimize the loss. This is like the best spot I can be when the loss is zero. That means my model is performing perfectly. Otherwise, I want to try and through some mechanism, go to the minimum point, the minima of the graph. That's our goal. And then we do this by back propagation. Up it's basically calculus stuff, trying to get the weights from the loss. You, you sort of do back propagation from the loss to the y values and then got to the actual weights of the, the thing. And 
you update the weights by sort of gradient descent, you you, you subtract, a, you have this hyperparameter called learning rate. You have you subtract a constant times the learning rate to uh, from the actual weights to update the model. So in every training room iteration, you update the model and then ultimately it's going to give you some promising result. Um, the other thing is, if we just keep stacking, stacking our linear functions together, it's still going to be a linear function. And the way we sort of make the line turn is we are adding all these activation functions. This is called ReLU, which is one of those activation functions that allows you sort of make a turn, sort of breaking the linearity of uh, the neural network, the function we are trying to simulate. And um, this is like the training detail of our neural network. It's going to be something like this. If you remember our training um, tensor, is going to be the shape of this. And then we feed it into some the, 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 the complex um, layers of uh, machine learning and the feed for neural network. And we're gonna, I'm going to get out of that. It's the, um, the Y value, the, the prediction. Remember, it's like three numbers representing the coordinate of uh, in the bar centric plot and here allow me to pre um, to present the outcome well just a uh, disclaimer this is not the entirety of the graph this is just a, a selection a subset of the graph that we chose to sort of for demonstration purposes but we are able to predict all the graph all together uh, this is with random forest regressive value text so we only use the Q values. And you can see if if you think this is green, the green dots are the real values and the red dots are the prediction. It's doing quite well with all your attacks already. And with, if we adding those attacks into account, you can see that it's, first of all, the loss is lower. And if you really pay attention to the portion here, we're actually simulating the function better. Let's go back. Let's do a quick comparison. It has been going for 25 minutes. Please continue. Sorry, 45 minutes already. Hello? Um, oh. uh, you have 30 minutes and you have used 25 minutes. So you have five minutes oh, left. Oh, sorry. OK, thank you. Yeah. Um, if you, sorry, uh, just going back. If we do a comparison here, we can see like the introduction of low text in machine learning training is actually making a difference in the actual output. And uh, it's it's the same thing with your network. Uh, you see here, this is the thing without low text induced uh, as the input data. And we have a lot of points, double O2. And if we uh, show the result with low text, you can slide. Uh, you can see already this this part at least is getting really better simulated, and uh, the the loss has decreased by a great amount. It's now like zero point, I don't know, triple O, o and the nine. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's the same thing. Not really much to talk about. Okay, recapping uh, here. That brings us to the conclusion. Um. I'm not going to bother uh, recapping because we are running out of time. I'm going to show you guys uh, exciting findings that I have. So the first thing is that the positive impact uh, low techs have in machine learning, in machine model learning. And I think you guys are all convinced from the previous graph I showed. So there's really much not thing to, well, to evaluate in that, evaluate uh, in that, I uh, I truly believe that the introduction of Leotex, the positive impact, is transferable, not in this problem, but also in other problem or uh, in the field of fluid mechanics. So I think that's something we can really work on in the future. Uh, 
What's the other thing that we uh, I want to mention is like the random forest outperforms new network. Like, okay, in the beginning of the training, I, I was so certain, okay, new network is going to outperform the random forest because new network is more complex. It's like random forest is just a machine learning algorithm. But well, you never know until you do, the, the experiments are done, right? Like, there's nothing really know about machine learning. Um, it, it shows like sometimes machine learning algorithms such as random forest can outperform your know in a great to a great extent and some um, problems so it's definitely worth trying when you're trying to train models to so try and simulate something in the future um don't just um don't just try and you know ignore all these machine learning uh, methods and go dive deep into the deep deep learning methods all right uh that's pretty much all I have to present. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any question or if you have any suggestion for my um, report, feel free to share it. Thank you very much. Well, any questions or discussions regarding the uh, uh, presentation? So I, I have a question, if, uh, if I may. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I, I missed a very critical part of your talk because initially I thought your your model was predicting the renal uh, renal stress tensor from from velocity field. So then, where is Lutex in the model? Is that a, a additional input oh, sorry. Input? Um, so where is Lutex in, in the model? Is that an additional input variable that you are uh, introduced to the Machine learning oh, model. Yeah. Um, uh, Lutex is generally uh, is used as an input feature. So, uh, so you missed the um, the input part. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just re-explain that. We have this Q values that is introduced by someone um, in 2017 to uh, to sort of abstract to sort of give an abstraction of what's inside, what's going on with the data, and then. If we in the first set, I just used all these Q values as the training input uh, data as uh, for 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 the model, and uh, in the second part, uh, apart from using the previous Q values I had, I add the extra field. It's just the little text for, as the training uh, features, and then the so that's an the additional feature that we added to the list. Yes. And yes. Are, the, are, are the feature defined on every grid, or are the feature defined for the entire domain? Every grid by uh, when you say every like, grid, do you mean example, every data sample? Do you mean that you have the uh, we had you have to include its value at every grid point, or uh, do you just take so, domain average? So. Um, I have this data set, right? I have this data set that uh, it consists of like X set, and Y values. The data set is average. The data set is yeah. already average. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So it only has like X and Y coordinates without the Z. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Sorry. <laughs> very well. Thank, Thank you very much for the question. Okay, uh, Professor Lisi uh, just asked uh, asked a question, uh, and the objective of function uh, is actually the any any isotropic part of the renal stress. So, so it is aimed at the renal stress. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Okay. Questions. I'd like to invite our next presenter. Okay, I'm gonna close my mic and my camera.
Who is the next speaker? We don't see anything. Sujang <clears throat> Song. We cannot see anything. Is Jiang here? Zhu, is Zhu Jiang Song? Uh, no, uh, it's Jiang Chi Ju. Jiang Chi Ju, Jiang Jiang Chi Ju. From Beihang University. Jiang Chi Ju is here. It sounds normal, uh, yeah. So. Hello, Doctor Lu. Yeah. Dr. Lu, actually, the Chiju Jiang was uh, in the class. As of now, he is he unable to attend the meeting now. Uh, so he was sent the recorded video presentation to play his to play. Shall I present present? Shall I play the video record? OK, you can present if you have this video. Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, I have sent me the video, recorded video presentation to play that time. At the time, he is unable to attend now. He is in the class. He's not here, that sounds for me, yeah. Yeah, he's not here and he's unable to attend now. You, he's you his have, class. yeah, his video, he just play his video, yeah. Yeah, sure. Hello everyone, it's my honor to have the opportunity to attend this conference and present our team's recent work. My name is Suji a PhD student from Bihar University. The topic of my presentation is... You may need to turn off the microphone. On the last evolution mechanism of linear cascade with leading age cooling curves. Okay, echo. So you may turn off the in this slide, my presentation. Can include four parts. Persistent efforts have been made to improve the thermal efficiency of the gas turbine engines. Uh, you mute your microphone uh, before you play the video. thermal load turbines, complex internal and external cooling configurations are commonly used to reduce the heat load on the blade surface. The introduction of cooling structures inevitably brings aerodynamic loss to the turbine stage, and the development of cooling structures deepens the contradiction. Thus, understanding the coupling mechanism of Coolant and mission has become the key to aerothermal design of air cooled turbines. The development of air cooled turbine loss mechanism can be divided into the development of loss model and the research on the internal loss mechanism of air cooled turbine. Based on the constant pressure mixing hypothesis, also proposed the classical model, which was developed by ATIO in the form of one-dimensional computational model suitable for a single hole with small pro ratio. Since then, they introduced entropy production in turbo machinery. The internal loss theory of things has had a new de development. Young and Wilcox divided 
the entropy in increase caused by viscosity distribution and the entropy increase driven by temperature difference. Rece researches about the loss mechanism were mainly discussing the total performance. It is not enough to describe the complicated mixing mechanism in novel air-cooled turbines. Therefore, this paper is aiming to refine the quantitative loss to get a better acknowledgement of loss mechani mechanism referring to procedures theory. Based on the previous investigation, my work is conducted on a subsonic air-cooled high-pressure stator. Five rows of holes are uniformly arranged on the leading edge with 10 holes in each hole. The pitch between adjacent holes is fixed and the five rows of holes are divided into three groups, namely sunction side group, leading edge group, and the pressure side group. The spanwise inclination angle and the steamwise inclination angle are selected as the main design parameters. The definition of these two parameters are shown in this fig. When the coolant is injected upwards, spanwise inclination angle is positive. Steam-wise inclination angle is positive when the coolant is, is injected downstream. To simplify the sample space, it should be noted that the three groups adopt the same spanwise inclination angle, and the pressure side group and the sunction side group adopt the same steam-wise inclination angle, and the steam-wise inclination angle of the leading edge is always zero. The sample space is shown in, in the table and the number of final cases is 54. The great details of the cascade are shown in this fig. The software for meshing is utilized to generate unstructured mesh for the computational domain of the turbine vein. The calculated Y plus near the wall is under one. Ansys software, CFX software is used for the numerical simulation to solve the steady street and dimensional resources in all average heavier stock secretions. The shear stress transport model is selected for the closure of the equations. Grid independence verification is carried out to prevent the influence of grid density on the accuracy of simulation results. When the number of grids reaches 19 million, the influence of increasing grid number on the cooling effect namely can be ignored. Considering the calculation cost and the numerical accuracy, the research selects the mesh of grade five for research. For the sources of loss, according to Nock and the Wilcox theory, entropy production can be divided into resources distribution and the loss caused by a transfer of finite temperature difference. For the zone of loss, the cascade is divided into neural zone and weak zone. Because there is no secondary flow, separation, or shock wave in the cascade, so the losses basically come from the boundary layer weak and coolant. When coolant is introduced, the boundary layer obtained by boundary layer identification method becomes the mixing zone between coolant and boundary layer, which we call it neural zone. Based on the bulb loss decomposition method and boundary layer identification method. Results caused by the introduction of coolant is discussed in the current session. As is shown in this fig, spermite slice between adjacent holes is divided into 10 sessions. Among the 10 sessions, session seven is displayed along the non air cold paste. The fig shows that after the leading edge, the boundary layer is thickened, especially on the sunction side. An interesting phenomenon is the sudden increment of boundary layer thickness near the chilling edge on pressure side. When we make difference between the boundary layer thickness of different sessions and non-air cooled case, we can get a fake on the right side. Things are different on pressure side and sunction side. The introduction of current in largest the thickness of boundary layer all over the sunction side. But on pressure side, the boundary layer gets thinner in zone A. The cooling jets are slower than those on sunction side. 
the high energy flow microclusters are more likely to exchange in monument with the boundary layer on the pressure side and the low velocity zone reduces. As for zone B, the sudden increment of boundary layer thickness is caused by the adjacent coolant. With the spanwise inclination angle, the current migrates spanwise as it, it develops towards chilling edge and accumulates near the chilling edge. The weak velocity profile is investigated on the S3 surface, 6% of blade core length after the chilling edge point. The loss distribution on S3 surface shows that current enlarges the weak loss and brings spanwise periodic non-uniformity. Weak loss can be described by the maximum weak velocity loss and the weak half width. The maximum velocity loss is the difference between the maximum loss and the average absolute velocity on velocity profile. The weak half width is the width between two points whose loss is half of the maximum velocity loss. The difference of maximum weak velocity and weak half width between expression and non air case indicates that the intensity and area of weak loss in, in, is enhanced by coolant. In other words, the inverse jet effect is stronger. The change of one layer and weak is closely related to the development of, of vortex. Five S3 surfaces are evenly set among the axes of coolant holes, namely from P1 to P5. The vortex identification on the five surface reveals vortex system consistent with the reference. The kidney-shaped vortex pair is dominant due to its eroding effect. Secondary vortex with different rotation is induced between the kidney-shaped vortex and the solid wall. Schematic fig of the vortices development is provided. The similarity of the development of vortex on both pressure side and assumption side is that one branch of the vortex is enhanced and the other branch is suppressed due to the spanwise velocity component of the jet. And when current upstream develops towards downstream adjacent hole, the coolant is lifted by the local coolant. What is different is that on the pressure side, the upstream vortex is higher in spanwise position than downstream coolant. While on the assumption side, the upstream current is lower than the downstream one. What makes the difference is different velocity and pressure field of mainstream. The current on suction side is accelerated by the mainstream more and gets bigger spanwise velocity component. The vorticities are more stretched by the mainstream. When the current reaches the P1 surface, the inner vortex becomes even narrower. What this is a merging into large scale and gradually stabilizing. But on the pressure side, the mixing progress between vortex are not so tense. When migrating the same steam-wise distance, the worst edge between vortices can still be seen on P5 surface. Enhanced kidney vortex 4 and suppressed kidney vortex 4 expand spanwise while developing downstream. When they reach the P5 surface, they are lifted and merged into large vortices. Now we will talk about the impact of different parameters on loss and cooling performance. Temperature and entropy production rate of different spanwise inclination angle are shown on the left side. While the right side is the distribution of spatial average cooling effectiveness along the breed profile. The fig indicates that the increasing of spanwise inclination angle can significantly increase the cooling effectiveness of the break surface. In addition, the geometric configurations with different spanwise inclination angles have similar chain of cooling effectiveness distribution. Mixing of the vortex and mission affects and directly leads to the loss in the cascade. The distribution of entropy production rate and the versus dissipation loss along the braid profile are shown in the fig. In the core region of the cooling jet, 
cascade loss is dominated by entropy production driven by temperature difference. The larger the spanwise inclination angle is, the larger the entropy production driven by temperature difference is. At the chilling edge, the values of entropy production and the precise distribution gradually approach to each other. Different from the similar distribution of cooling effectiveness of spanwise inclination angle, the influence of steam-wise inclination angle on cooling effectiveness distribution does not have obvious linear relationship. And the change of steam-wise inclination angle has little influence on cooling performance, as you can see on the right. Loss, the increment of the steam-wise inclination angle will reduce both loss due to temperature difference and the velocity friction. On the left fig, the increase of the steam-wise inclination angle will reduce the normal component of coolant outflow. And the coolant vortex from the upstream and are relatively more attached to the wall. With relatively weakened vortex chains, the core area of the cooling jet is relatively flat and the mixing area and strength is reduced. Therefore, the loss is reduced. By integrating the loss in the cascade, the loss composition ratio of different regions and different sources is obtained. In both air cooled and non air cooled linear cascades, the velocity distribution in the near wall area is the main source of loss. The entropy production driven by the temperature difference in the wake can be basically ignored for the total loss, which means in the wake zone, the temperature reaches equilibrium. With the spanwise inclination angle enlarging, the thermal part in the near wall zone is dominant in loss increase, while the versus part in the near wall zone is dominant in loss reduction, resulting in overall loss increase. The loss in the weak zone changes little. The larger the steam-wise inclination angle is, the smaller the total cascade loss is. The main source of the total loss change is still the entropy production driven by the temperature difference in the near world region. Here is the overall aerodynamic and cooling performance of all the samples in the sample space. We can find the red dot with good cooling and bad aerodynamic performance, and the purple dot with both bad cooling and bad aerodynamic performance, which is in line with general knowledge. However, the blue dot is the case with both good cooling and aerodynamic performance, and the case is the one with a relative big spanwise inclination angle and a relative big steamwise inclination angle. Finally, it's a summary of this study. Based on the loss chasing and the decomposition methods in air cooled linear cascade, loss and cooling mechanism are discussed. Result indicates the following conclusions. For the boundary layer, there is overall increment in boundary layer thickness, except part of pressure site. And the introduction of coolant enhanced the reverse jet effect of wake. And we can see more severe deformation of vortex and longer spanwise migration distance on suction side than pressure side. For the loss in cascade, the sources loss in near wall zone dominates the loss reduction, and the thermal part in near wall zone dominates the loss increment, which results in an overall loss increment. And as for the impact of parameters, bigger spanwise angle inclination angle benefits cooling performance and worsens aerodynamic performance. And bigger steam-wise angle benefits aerodynamic performance and has little impact on cooling performance. Reasonable combination of spanwise and steam-wise inclination angle can generate good 
aerodynamic and cooling performance. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Thank you for the excellent presentation. Now, does anyone have any questions or discussions regarding the presentation? Uh, the reporter is not on site, so uh, if there are any questions. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, Thank you. I, I'd like to invite our last present, uh, presenter, uh, Rez. Uh, please begin your presentation. Thank you. Okay, everyone can hear me? Oh, yes. So let me go there, uh, entire screen. Oh. So let me go share. Am I sharing? Yes, yes. So uh, let me, uh, okay, can you see that? Oh, I can see, I can see. You can see? Okay, oh, yes. this is a novel noise reduction procedure. Is it possible to see that? Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. So I will begin that. Uh, first thing first, uh, please uh, allow me to thank Professor Liu to allow me to do uh, this presentation. So the first thing is that uh, my name is Yazdan Razi. I am uh, San Jose State University. I am lecturer there, adjunct professor. Uh, my email is this one, Yazdan Razi at sjsu.edu because you know. Even the fact that my presentation is the last one, is it possible that you know you are tired and you cannot uh, ask questions? So you can send me email and I will answer back. The other person uh, that they are important in this project, it is Yao Ezun uh, Kepe, is his PhD in San Jose State University, my colleague. He helped me to gather all the information. And uh, this is Kitchen and Maliban, my friend and my colleague back in France and now he is a professor in Thailand University. We still have contact, we still work together. And finally, uh, the last one is Surush, my friend and my colleagues from uh, many years back, but now he is in Canada, in BC Hydro. With these things, uh, I will talk about what I'm going to do. Uh, first thing first, uh, agenda, preliminary talks, original system, I will talk and system solution and then conclusion. One thing I should tell you, given the fact that today I have much more time than necessary, so I thought that first I will finish the one related to the work in noise. Then when I have time, I will get back to constructal law. I have much more uh, cases that I worked on. So uh, here's some agreement and some housekeeping. All questions will be answered at the end of presentation. And you can also send me an email with your question. So please note that whenever you send email, I will answer back. So you can express this was for Zoom. So preliminaries, uh, what is constructor law? Uh, in your left, you can see Professor Bejan. Uh, he is the pioneer of uh, constructor law. Uh, the one person who in 1997 began this uh, law. And person in the right, uh, Professor Cyril Laurente, uh, the person who worked uh, parallel to him and um, very interesting work that he, she did. Uh, definition, the first thing I can tell you for finance size system to persist in time, meaning to live, it must evolve in such a way that it provides easier access to the imposed global currents that flow through it. If you don't understand that, I don't, uh, I'm not surprised because the first time that I heard that, I thought this is nonsense. This is impossible to understand. But years later, when I worked on that, I understood that it's easy and exactly, I think, in the end of this presentation, you will have the same idea. One thing I want to ask you, uh, all these books that I have put it here, it is written by Adrian Bejan. So uh, 
from the first one that you can see uh, to the last one, everything is explained in uh, these books. So, you know, if you want very basic things, I think go and find shape and structures. So, one thing that, you know, here is very important is what are characteristics of constructural design? So what is very important, because whenever you have some design, okay, why do you think it is constructive? So you can predict by theoretical and experimental numerical methods, this is constructive, it's not fractal, can evolve with time, it's not rigid, gives us a shape, and is very flexible in incorporating other constraints. And these are the better designs. So these are all related to constructive. So question is how did Professor Bejan discover this constructive law? So while he was correcting his student homework, apparently he thought about this law. But I can tell you that he was working before that, his work on geometry optimization method that I put the picture here is again, something that you can use it in these things. Uh, meaning that, you know, in constructive law. So for example, in your left, you can see in your right, uh, if these components that generate heat are packed together, it's very hot and the temperature will go up if a little bit they are far away, uh, so meaning that uh, there will be no effect of uh, boundary layer. So, but there is some optimum space when the boundary layer is at least, uh, the spacing is at least the boundary layer, you can do this. So these are the things that, you know, he mentioned. So my motivation for these things, so given the fact that, you know, as you know, I have uh, all these things, geometry, optimization, correlations, process, pedagogical aspect, predictive aspects of philosophical thermodynamics, heat transfer. Uh, I think uh, I became very interested in this subject. And I could serve on all different domains and it helped me to motivate my, me, myself and my students. So this is, I think I can tell. So where this law came from? So as you can see, you can go through that all the books of vision so he began with entropy generation, then determining the heat loss of the system, then exergy analysis, scale analysis, heat transfer optimization, geometric optimization, correlation for optimum geometry. So you know, it is very, very different aspect. So the other thing is that uh, I will stop here. I will get back to this. So you remember that, you know, I should back to uh, slide number 12, but I will, uh, go to the one that, you know, I wanted to mention there. Uh, you can see that I have all these different uh, examples on this. But, you know, the thing that I want today to discuss, it is uh, noise analysis. So, as you can see, problem statement, uh, what exactly it is, are just to bring down the noise level of the system. The system I mentioned that it is server, uh, our tools is we may use foam and duct, something very simple in the context of constructor law. And this work, to please make sure that this is purely experimental. If I'm very sorry that it is not numerical, although I have done numerical work before, but this work is purely experimental and I hope I will have much more uh, person to help me to model this numerical. So what is my approach? My approach is based on trial and error. So, you know, uh, whatever I do, it is uh, by bearing the fans with trial and error, I will do something that finally I will find my solution to the system. Bring down the uh, noise level. So, you know, if beginning with uh, conducting tests, then observe the trend of the test, then use constructive concept, then first construct, then second construct, and finally finish uh, the thing that I want to do. So the other thing is that when we are doing acoustics, it is two meter setup I'm using, 10 mic system. It is hemispherical setup. This is very important. And you know, the thing that I will do, it is not that easy. You have not seen this, although there are some simple things that they are done with uh, something like uh, cell phones, but it is not very, very exact. These things that, you know, there are not many person uh, or places in the world that this has this setup. So fan systems, you know, the fan system that I'm using is 12 by 12 centimeter uh, square in cross section and two of them uh, makes one fan trace. 
uh, I have in this system, I have three pantries. I have put a picture there after uh, clear, clear, try to have some uh, noise reduction on that. Uh, the other thing is that the fans are in push mode. Push, it is when it is pushing air outside. And controlled by DIAC, the fan it will be controlled by DIAC. It is a software. So the fan speed will be varied from 2500 RPM, 10% to 4700 RPM, 100%. These are some of the values that I put it here, as you can see that. So for 10%, 30%, and 70%, 100%, I have all these fans here and I have given the values. You know, the most important thing is the second table that you can see the, for these loads. I managed to bring down one dB, uh, the noise. So, you know, the noise level original system and noise level after a constructual solution. Uh, once it is very important how I am doing the constructal solution. For example, in my left corner, you can see that uh, the system is there. Then I will go to the first construct, meaning that around the system I will put my foam, uh, my um, yes, my foam. Um, one thing very important: it is as much uh, as the handle of the fan trays, nothing more than that. Then I will do horizontal line. Then I will do vertical line. That will be the third construct. Then I will use my fourth construct that it is foam. And then fifth construct, I will use tape because you know everything that should be very, very solidly there. So I remember that you know when we were talking uh, before, you know, Professor Leo told me, well, uh, you should show that validation. So this is one of the validation that I have here. Uh, on the horizontal axis, you have log RPM. It is log of uh, uh, RPM of the fan speed. And I have, on vertical axis, you see the sound power based on dB. So as you can see that, you know, the top one is the one that, you know, it's bare system. And this red one, it is the one that, you know, after the fifth construct, you know, I have found something like this. One thing I should tell you, uh, this work, it was done, it is very rapid. Uh, it was done in Thanksgiving, and when I was co correlate, co communicating with Professor Liu. Uh, so it was very, very uh, fresh, the work, uh, it is done. And um, one thing I should tell you, for this uh, setup, uh, I will show you in the end, it is very difficult. And you know, you should do really uh, fast things. Because, you know, um, most uh, of the time, you know, I put it this there at uh, Thanksgiving because nobody was around and I could do this there. So that's the thing I want to tell you. The other thing, that conclusion that I have here, the correlation, uh, the reduction of the noise level, the noise reduction was 100%, 1 dB. We proved again the constructal law. Why I proved again? Because you now I worked before on this and uh, I was in Italy and I presented another work, not this one, but you know, on one RU system. And future work, the foam, which is uh, very adapted, better adapted, I will use that. Uh, and this, uh, the other thing is that the use of better dark material. And one thing that I want to tell you, I want to incorporate vortex ring features of this, this work. Because you know, we've talked about vortex and everything. And you note that everything that we are doing here is vortex related. So for this part, uh, acknowledgement, the first author, meaning me, acknowledged the help received from the Aerospace Department of San Jose State University. Also, the work was encouraged, received, encouraged and received by Professor Adrian Vision. So uh, thanks, Merci, uh, Grazia. These are the old things I have done. It is in the United States, in France, and Italy. So please ask any question. Uh, if you want, uh, I will answer your question. Okay, if thank no. you for an excellent presentation. How does thank anyone you. have any questions or discussions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. I cannot see anything, so please, uh, if there is something, you tell me uh, or ask questions because you know, uh, I cannot see anyone. So you can begin at the thing, you know, if you have any questions. If not, I will go back to construct of law again from uh, slide number 11. Um, I 
think there is no question. So can I go back to my slide for constructive law? So I will go to slide number 11. Well, so this was the one that, you know, I was talking about uh, the construct law. This was 2006 uh, when I was leaving France, coming to the U.S. On your right, you can see the picture I took from Toulouse. On my left, you can see the picture I took from uh, San Francisco. So you can see the difference here very, very soon. And so if you take a look at that, uh, about the constraint here. Why here everything is a straight line? Why here, there in France, everything is sprawling things? So because this is surface. The thing that I was talking about, the constraint, it is exactly here. There is a space constraint, so everything will be sprawling. Uh, but here in the US, the space is so much uh, vast that every can, everything can be very straight. So early developments of constructor law, you know, uh, the thing that, you know, I can tell you, uh, this is something nature, uh, you know, you have the mimicking things, you know, uh, when you have uh, hands and you was in the wrench, you'll see this is exactly the same thing. Or when you see the lung and you can see how everything has evolved there. So these are the things that, you know, you can see that. So these are some relationship between speed and body mass you can see here. Uh, this paper I have written uh, there, when you can, where you can find this. And the other thing is the humanity landmark. Everything that you can see, the evolution of humankind on uh, social organization. So you can see how everything has uh, developed very fast. The other very important thing is evolution of humans. You know, from that part on left, if you can see, and to right, uh, we are using now uh, electrical vehicle. So this is the clock ticks in the right direction. So one thing that I want to tell you is that uh, how we can use the construct law. Construct law is a scale analysis and geometric optimization method. So one thing that I put here is Louis Carroll book, uh, Alice in the Wonderland. I think most of you, you know that. Or if you don't know, uh, you can read this again. Uh, one mistake that it was done here, it is when uh, that Alice was becoming very small and becoming very big, the level of the voice never changed, but it is wrong because, you know, uh, the voice level or no sound level, it has something to do with the uh, mass or airflow. So basically when you are something very small, it is something uh, that the noise level is very low. The issue of spreading material in a medium, so you know, high conductivity versus low conductivity. This was another problem that Bejan uh, originally worked. So you know, supposing that you have a high conductivity material and low conductivity material, how you are going to spread this? So basically, it is based on uh, construct of law. You can do this, and finally, it will become something like this. After eight construct, it will become something like that. Thermal optimization, it is something very interesting to uh, the steps in obtaining an optimum thermal design, uh, specify your objectives again, uh, define the uh, constraint of the problem, and impose boundary or initial conditions. Uh, one simple example is the one that I finished myself. It was something physical model, maximize heat transfer from an isothermal horizontal cylinder between parallel uh, insulated walls. What is exactly this is the geometry. So our objective is increase heat transfer from cylinder based on geometric parameters. So how we can increase that? The second one is prove the existence of optimal spacing. Uh, one thing when I was doing this work, many important or famous people, they think there is no optimal spacing. And number three, obtain parametric correlation for this heat transfer problem. So constraint of the problem, you know, cylinder is isothermal. H over T was fixed is equal seven, for example. The walls were insulated, and Raleigh uh, thermal Raleigh number was fixed at around 1,000. So these are the results that you know I have some numerical things I put on the right, and uh, I will talk about what I found. So as you can see, correlation is something like Nusselt is a function of Raleigh number. 
e to the power of uh, e divided by d and h over d. And the other thing is existence of optimum is something like that, and e over d is equal to 3. So in this work, you can see the Nusel number increases. And I did experimental and numerical work at the same time. So all things indicated something very important, that there is some uh, geometry that it is it can increase in transfer. So I will go back, you know, uh, when I came to the US, I had I changed from one job to another job, not because I wanted to, because this was something obligatory. At first I was very sad, but after that I thought maybe it's very interesting because I gained so much uh, information that I could not uh, believe that uh, and exactly it was based on the construct of law. So one of the work I did, it was on LED. So as you can see, I have proved something like you mentioned, something like LED engine, that it is something they have mentioned that. Um, if the heat generated in LED and its maximum level temperature are known, we can obtain the optimal heat sink shape. So this is something, uh, the shape of heat sink that can be done. So this is constructive design, I, I will tell you. So this uh, on the left, this is something normal. On the right, this is three branches, something that you can see that. An example, possible heat sink design. So, you know, on the right, this one, this is very, very uh, different. So, you know, uh, if you want to normalize thermal resistance, so you can see that uh, exactly based there's some numerical work and experimental work. So you see these work, they are very close together. So uh, the thing that you can see that bifurcation around two or three, it is exactly very good. Much more than that, it will not very good. Bifurcation, I mean, when uh, you have something like this, um, for example, here, two. If it is something like that, next level to three, something like this, but you know, as you can see here, uh, you can see that, you know, at level four, maybe it is something like three, something like good, because, you know, it is something like that one, it reaches one uh, for resistance. But a little more than that, it's not good at all. So finally, artistic constructive design it is something like this. So as you can see here, it is uh, LED, and here it is the shape that you can find. So the second thing, again, uh, it is a space exploration application. So this is a work that I did with Professor Malivan he, that I mentioned his name in the beginning of the um, presentation. So the question was, is concerned all possible under microgravity condition or weightlessness condition? I should tell you that, you know, in France, I was doing something like that uh, with vibration. So it was uh, something related to uh, space station and what it is possible to have some heat transfer there. So, you know, the problem that I solved, it's very simple. It is a cavity. It is posed, imposed at temperature T1 and T2. Uh, it is N. It is means that some uh, vibration in that direction, vertical to temperature gradient. And upper and lower boundaries are insulated. So, the constraint is 2D in compress of flow, business approximation harmonic vibration, and you know, the uh, tau of vibration is less than uh, therm thermal and hydrodynamic uh, time scales, but larger than um, the time scales of uh, acoustics. So the other thing is that amplitude of vibration should be less than H divided by beta delta T. So it is something normal because you know, you cannot have amplitude of vibration, it is infinity. So having said that, uh, this is something that, you know, you cannot find very easily on Earth. And the other side on the right, it is Nusselt number. So it is shown that Nusselt number can be increased very, very interestingly under microgravity conditions. The other thing are optimum values of the shape of these things. A, it is something like that. A dot uh, optimum is 0 0.4, 0 0.04, uh, RAV to the power of 0 0.4 Prandtl. RAV is vibrational Riley number. So, you know, the only thing is that uh, you should replace to some extent uh, a G by B omega. So this is something like this uh, to some extent. So everything that, you know, I have given everything that, you know, you can use it. Um, for example, 
the C and uh, for correlation, you, you can see here, C is very important, the uh, power of M is very important, and power of N. So everything uh, is one, done, and you know, I have written here uh, that, you know, up to 400 person, you can increase mass of number. So if somebody asks you microgravity, everyone asks, you know, it's impossible to have convection. Yes, it is possible in a confined geometry, it is possible that you can increase the transfer. So one thing that is biological application, it is not right now, it is a constructal law, COVID-19. So what exactly is COVID-19 going to do with uh, uh, constructal law? So, you know, when a person is here, you know, this is a spread and this is a direction of when somebody coughed. So as you can see, there are some pictures here that, that you know, I have found here and there. So as you can see that uh, the person on the uh, on right is doing some coughing and on the bottom, you can see the velocity of that. And, you know, at that time it was first experiment because, you know, uh, everything was very important. And you know how long everything, uh, how much it will cover the distance. So where do we explain appearance of constructive design? So the question was that. So where we want to suppress the operation, propagation of the virus, respiration system should be protected. This is something very important. This is a screen that you know in the left you can see that, and on the right it is some studies that they have done that uh, it shows that how putting mask will reduce amount of virus. So these were very important. Again here, uh, fluid mechanics of trajectory of the sneeze. So you can see that how uh, when somebody sneezes, how everything will propagate, but when he has some mask, what will happen? So you can see that here and how everything is possible. Uh, these papers are something 2014, uh, it has come, Journal of Fluid Mechanics. It was before uh, COVID, but uh, the other one, it was around the COVID time, it was 2020. So again, uh, so this question is that when we are using Constructive law, is it possible to predict everything easily? So one of them is supermarket. Uh, if you have been supermarket, you can see that. These supermarket things, you know, you have done something like this. Uh, they have done something like that, limiting the entry of the people. So in many supermarkets in the US, they only allowed in one place to enter. And then uh, in the aisles, you know, they told, uh, you can see either in this direction or in that direction. The other thing was some uh, social distancing that, you know, uh, it was very important, six feet. So, you know, these are something like that, that you, know, you know, I think people, they could forget this. But at that time I was working on everything. So how we can use something like that with uh, constructive law. So, you know, for example, here on your right, you can see restricting the direction. And on your uh, on your right, you can see that uh, this is some distance, and on your left, you can see restricting the direction. And one person, you can see at the bottom, uh, measuring the six feet distance. So with all these things, engineering the contamination. So you can see uh, the one that you know without protection, you know it is something skyrocketed that. But when you have done everything with protection, it has been tamed. So it was. This is the first observed case. Uh, so since the first observed case, and this is something like that. But you know, um, we can tame this. The other thing here, uh, again, uh, quantification of some of the things that I did myself. So it was the work that uh, uh, when uh, it was done charging, and it was something um, with some caps, capacitors, and planar magnetic. You know, you ha I have seen this thing. I have done some numerical work. Numerical work was done by ANSYS. And so you can see that how it is possible to change the um, constructal things. So you can see that with, when we have constructal uh, idea, you can write down something very interesting, very fast, how you can increase heat transfer. If you can bring down uh, the rods here, you can put something that it will touch uh, the PCB. So you can increase heat transfer very much. 
The other thing is that uh, the architecture, most important thing, uh, it will grow out of the component of the system. So exactly it was like the one that you have uh, around the uh, rivers when you have cities. Uh, so this is something very interesting, although it was very interesting, um, I did not publish it. Um, I've sent somewhere, but because I should tell you, uh, construct law, this is not something everyone understands. And most of the paper, as, as soon as they see something constructal, they will reject the paper. So I am very cautious about using the word uh, constructal, uh, but it is something there. Everyone can see this, and I think you will see my point of view. Uh, one of the things that, you know, it's a hollow lens. I don't know if you have something virtual reality. Um, I hope that you have used some of these things. Uh, virtual reality, uh, evolution of constructual design approach. Uh, so my question was, is virtual reality an evolution of constructual design? The thing is that, yes, uh, it can be. And you can refer to telephone, cell phone, and internet. You know, this question I asked Adrian himself because, you know, I thought about that, you know, it is something very difficult, you know, when you are asking somebody else who is in the very, very higher uh, level of uh, some scientific value. So with something like this, you know, when I ask question here, I've many, many times check that if I'm not talking nonsense. And finally, I sent him the question. So, uh, yes, he told me, you know, like this telegraph, telephone, everything in the beginning, there was some restriction. Also, uh, I asked him what kind of uh, constraint you will encounter in virtual reality. And he told me, well, in virtual reality, what we will reach something exactly what we have. So when you are using cell phone, you have, you are using some constraint. When you are using some kind of telephone, you are using some constraint. Internet, the same thing, uh, whatever you are using, so you are using uh, the constraint here, and you should circumvent that. So these are the things that are very important. One thing that's very important is the pedagogical purpose, although I know most of you are, uh, either, I, I've seen many of you, you are still uh, in finishing your, in the last stage of PhD, but uh, maybe you are teaching, maybe you have some experience, and very few, uh, I think, there are professors here. But anyway, so you can see online teaching, you have seen this problem again. So can we use construct of law? If you are thinking about that, yes, we can use, I have used this um, myself for redesigning the uh, break rooms. So uh, one of the things that it is break rooms there. At the time that you know I have written this uh, break rooms, I did not write that, but after that I have written on this. So we're first going to try to design the course around the SLOs. SLO uh, meaning that you know whenever you are from the subject uh, objective of the course, and second construct uh, at engagement and break room polls. So meaning that. When you are using second construct, you are adding some uh, usage of the uh, online things. Third construct and sessions and handwritten exercise. These are the things that I did myself. You know, when I'm using an online course, I use whiteboard. Um, so it is something back of me, and I will uh, try to use that. And fourth construct creates small, uh, small groups uh, online sessions for a step by solution. So these are the things that, again, uh, it's very interesting. You can break up uh, the very, very large number of groups to a smaller one. And when you are doing this, finally, you should do a specifications grading, uh, multiple tests and retakes. So these are the things that, you know, I have done. So I have, uh, I think, write down everything here. When you are doing specifications grading, object is a method which can increase the student's grade. Uh, reduce their anxieties, have uh, them more control over their grades. Uh, these things, I think it is relevant only in the US. Uh, maybe it's not that much interesting to you, but again, take a look at that. So this is the, about the grade, because I know many people, they don't care about the grade. 
many places, at least in France when I was, I, they do not care about the grades. And when I talk about these things, they told me you are wasting your time. It is not good. So it's normal to say the design of this method around the grade. So when we are talking about special grade, it should be emphasized that increasing of the grade is not the only objective of this method. Constraint, student satisfaction. So the procedure is subdivided uh, to several constructs. So the first construct, again, I had uh, changed back to construct law. First construct, midterm one. So there's students and their results. And then the second construct, midterm two, results. Uh, some changes, add more problems, create whiteboard sessions, and why had recent exercise, create a section, you be the professor. So these are the things that I did. Some of the comments, be more visual, have uh, more soft problems. So these were something that, you know, I have encountered. But anyway, it was okay. So partial conclusion here, by using construct law, we may solve scientific solution to fundamental as well as industrial problems that I have done. Uh, one should identify objectives as well as constraint to the problem. Construct of law can provide terrestrial as well as extraterrestrial solution to different problems. That things, you know, terrestrial and extraterrestrial, uh, it was some of the email that I exchanged with Adrian. The first time that he, I was working because on space technology, I asked him if somebody has used some construct law in space. He told me no, because nobody knows about them. So, but I did myself, but you know, uh, the problem is that first thing first, uh, constructal work is nobody knows, space technology thing nobody knows again, so it becomes very, very difficult. So constructal law can direct us to developing new technologies, as I have done this in, uh, for example, using USB as a cooling of a um, charger. We can use constructal law in our class too, so these are anything. So with this, I think I have finished every part. So I hope uh, let me see what you have. Yes. So if you have any question, please ask me a question. Well, did anyone want to ask me any question? Please go ahead. Uh, can, can, I, can I have a okay. question? Um, yes, go ahead. I've ever heard that um, the cell automaton is related to the design of the nature of our world. And uh, um, I, I, it's my first time to hear the construction law, but um, this, um, the law is related to some the um, the cell cell the concept the philosophy of the cell auto automaton. It, it, it might be apparently from appearance. It, it, it might it might be different. But, it's um, possible, you know. Uh, uh, it is possible that we can relate this. Do not forget that you know when we are talking about uh, constructive law. It is uh, came from someone who is engineer, who is not someone uh, who is a philosopher or someone who is engineer. So basically what he interests, it is in applying this to something that works. So if it is something like that, I'm not surprised, but please note that uh, the idea of concern law, as I mentioned, that uh, it is about flow. We should have better flow. So that's it. Okay, th thank you very much. You are welcome. Doctor Wang. The ones here. I am, I am watching one question. I have a question. 
are there any relationship or difference between construct law and cell automation? I just well, ask him. Ask him. Okay. You ask, so I oh, okay. Uh, I, I would like to add a question. Uh, if well, there are no other questions, are there any com competing concepts regarding conceptual law? Uh, constructual law, sorry. Uh, constructual law, you know, if you are mentioning that if there are some competition, meaning that uh, if there is some competition between conduction and convection or two types of convection, yes, there are something like this, uh, basically, and we can use that. Uh, so I don't know if this is the same question that you have. For example, if you take a look at uh, the problem of um, intersecting asymptotes, so you can see that when it is something like that optimization or when you have optimization, optimized shape. So basically you should have something between two different uh, things, two, two different mechanisms that they are competing together. Is it so? This is a question that you have? Uh, my question was, uh, are there any other similar theory or similar philosophy well, well, okay. regarding okay. the well, you know, there, are, there are many things, you know, when I was looking at that, uh, especially in Europe, there are many uh, interesting things there. But the problem is that uh, some of them, you should be at the height of building something. There are something like that, they can talk a lot, a lot about something mathematical and they cannot come up something. The, the only things that I can tell you, construct law is very simple. As I have shown this, I have gone through acoustic, I have gone through electrical things. I have done something about, um, even uh, for pedagogical purposes. You know, construct law is very flexible and easy. Although it's possible that you work on mathematics, but you know, you complicate things. So even if there are something, it is not very famous. As I have mentioned that, um, Adrian has written many books. Also, uh, are, there are other people, papers that you can see that. And you know, there are some conferences on construct every year. And you can see that the papers there, it is abundant right now. So I think it is majority of the ideas right now that you can find something very interesting. If you can do something on this, if you have a uh, wake up and when you are going to work, or you are doing something, you can focus on what exactly means construct of law. You can do lots of things. Uh, for example, when I was worse understanding these things, it was difficult for me. I was in France and I was going through uh, shops. So I saw that the difference between smaller shops and supermarket, and then the, I understood what the Adrian was talking about. So, you know, these are the things. Do not forget that. Uh, if you understand that, not everybody will understand that. So this is something that I should mention that. So please uh, note that some people, they are very, they are famous, they do this, some people, they are not famous. Uh, so when they are, you are doing this, when you are not famous, it's very dangerous, that I can tell. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You know, one thing that I want to mention here that, you know, um, on vortex tube, you know, I have done experiment on vortex tube, but I did not seek someone who has worked on vortex tube, but did some uh, work on acoustics. So this is something very interesting. If somebody likes to do this, it is, I think, the future for him. I think I'm the last speaker. So if there is no question, I'm going to leave because, you know, from the big morning today, I was working and this uh, work it is now around 10.38. I should go home. I'm still in my workplace. So if you excuse me, I'm going to leave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why is your turn? Uh,
Uh, Professor Leo, I didn't understand, I didn't get what you mentioned. Uh, Dr. Wang? Uh, not here. No, this is Razi. Uh, you know, Dr. you can stop. Wang said he, he has something to do. He may not uh, be in the meeting all the uh, time. I am, I am here. <laughs> currently, I am here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Let us so. just say you are 10. So it does not so speak. <laughs> what do you want to say? <laughs> so, so uh, congr congratulations to all. We have. Uh, I sorry, think we I'm have. Sorry, doc, Dr. Wong, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, hello, Professor Liu, and I'm Wei Bo Zhong from Beihang University. I'm I'm sorry to say that uh, maybe I am the last speaker because. Uh, the primary schedule didn't add my name in the in it, and I updated it to okay. Stephen, and uh, Stephen gave me a new schedule, and I think maybe I'm the last speaker. Oh, um, you are the last. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can confirm this situation sure. with Stephen. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. We can give talk. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are <laughs> playing that one. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can give the talk now. Okay, okay. So can I share my screen now? Okay. But you really did not speak. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay, 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 thank you. Uh, um, I'm sorry, yeah, and uh, hello everyone, and uh, Professor Liu and Dr. Wong, and it's very happy to see you online after two years because I have uh, participated uh, in the first uh, Liu Text workshop two years ago, so it's very happy for me to uh, present our new progress on vortex identific identification in compressor flows. So today, um, I, I am Zhong Weibo from Beihang University, and I'm supervised by Professor Yang Wei Liu. And uh, today our topic is um, investigation of vortex flow features in compressor flows based uh, on vortex identification methods. And uh, uh, the presentation has uh, five aspects, and the firstly, we are going to uh, talk about the background briefly. And uh, as we know, uh, the vortices are everywhere in nature and uh, in engineering flow, and they are famously depicted as the sinus and the muscles of fluid motions. And in our research field, the compressor, especially in tube machinery, uh, the performance of compressor is notably restricted by complex vertical flows, and such as corner separation and uh, tip leakage flow in the uh, compressor. And thus, uh, a deeper insight into the vertical flows in compressor is of great meaning for exploring the flow mechanisms and improving the aerodynamic performance of compressors. And uh, however, uh, these vortices entangled with each other. So it is a very uh, complex system. So accurate vortex, vortex identification and uh, the required variety of complex vortex information are of great importance to understand the flow mechanism inside the compressor. So uh, in the second part, we will briefly review the lutex based uh, decomposition method and uh, also the local trace elliptical region indication method propo proposed by our group. And firstly, we know the lutex performs in the swelling flow where the discriminant delta is positive and there are complex eigenvalues. And in the transform frame of lutex, the Lutex method obtains the rigid body rotation and the pure shearing of the swelling flow. And also it can give the relative uh, swelling strengths and the compression stretching factors. And uh, the Lutex based velocity gradient decomposition provides an effective approach to distinguish the rigid body rotation, pure shearing and uh, compression stretching part. Um, and the RS decomposition divides the vorticity vector into a rotation part and uh, a shearing part. And further, in the positive delta space, uh, the newly proposed local trace criterion constructs a new tensor, Psi. Uh, the Psi, psi is here. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the vector is half of the quadratic velocity gradient tensor and uh, the magnitude 
of local trace criterion is defined as the first invariant of this tensor psi. And a, a positive local trace, the LT, indicates a local vortex region. And the projection plan named as LT plan is constructed in the positive delta space like this. And its axis axis psi is the ratio between lambda r and lambda ci. And its ordinate axis eta is the ratio between lambda cr and uh, lambda ci. And in the LT plan, the projection of local trace criterion is an elliptical region and incompressible flow with the zero first uh, environment of the um, characteristic equation. The p, p equals to zero line is projected uh, in the line across the uh, original point. And it is known that in the positive delta space, the spiraling trajectory of the local flow point can be expressed in the curvilinear coordinate system whose basis vectors are the eigenvectors of velocity gradient tensor. And the, the real eigenvalue lambda r reflects the stretching or compression rate of the spiraling trajectory along the rotational direction vr. Okay, And the lambda cr indicates the amplification or damping of the orbital radius in the swelling plane determined by the vector vcr or, uh, and vci. So according to this, the coordinate axis and the p equals p equals to zero iso line. This three line can divide can divide the uh, elliptical region into six parts, and each part has the corresponding spiraling pattern, and they are summarized in the color table. And uh, this is this indication method is so called uh, the local trace criterion based elliptical region. It can help to distinguish tangled vortex structures in complex vertical flow. And the local trace criterion has mathematical relationship with lutex. Yes, for the normalized lutex method, the omega r, if set the threshold value as 0 0.5, uh, with assuming the sigma equals, equals to 0, the result of omega r greater than 0 0.5 is equivalent to that of the positive LT. So the projection in the LT plan of uh, omega r equals to 0 0.5 is also the elliptical region in the center of the LT plan. And when this threshold value of omega r is greater than 0 0.5, the resulting vortex region is still an ellipse, but uh, the size of it becomes smaller as the threshold increases. Uh, the shearing component is S1 and uh, a non-zero sigma also makes the uh, ellipse smaller. So the next part, we're going to talk about the application of this vortex identification method methods in compress compressor flows. And the first one we're going to talk about is the corner separation flow in the highly loaded compressor cascade. So the flow field is uh, this flow field we test here is simulated by the delay detached eddy simulation and based on the SA model. Um, the total grid number is about uh, 9 million for half span computational domain. The DDS flow field uh, you can see provides a similar distribution of total, total pressure loose at the measurement plan uh, as the experimental result. So the structure of the three-dimensional corner separation flow consists of multiple vortices. Uh, the, the conventional topologies of corner separation have been summarized in some previous studies like this and like this map. Uh, those vortex structures can be distinguished by their actual directions of rotation. So the, and the most important vortex structures are the passage vortex uh, in actually counterclockwise direction. And another important vortex structure is the concentrated shading vortex in the opposite direction. And, and as shown in the DDS flow field, the actual component of ridge body rotation vector successfully identifies the vortex topologies and uh, their rotating directions. And as in the uh, average results in the left figure, and vortices in different directions, vortices rotating in different directions can be uh, clearly distinguished at a different span height region, just like the given conventional topologies. 
But while in transient results, you can see fine scale vortices can be resolved, but most of them are highly obfuscated. Although the regional distribution of vortices in average results cannot be recognized in transient results, uh, it is an embodiment of the uh, flow tendency in the complex un unsteadiness. So it is warranted to look into the contribution of unsteady behaviors to the flow tendency shown by the averaged flow structures. As, so to extract the unsteady behavior of vortices in the passage, the Lutex and LTR indicator are sampled in two typical spanwise lines. And the, the first one is the line at uh, about 60% cold lens in the passage, where the corner separation is just generating from the end wall and uh, forms the passage vortex. And many, you can see many counterclockwise vortices can be observed in this spatial temporal distribution of actual lutex. And uh, stronger pure shearing by the interaction between vortices can also be observed. And the sampling line, the sampling line at 60% uh, coalesce across the region of developed passage vortex with um, the spurning pattern is actually alternating and uh, radially amplified, which are wrapped in shearing affected vortices with actually stretching and uh, radially, radially damping pattern. And these vortices exist with an obvious period, periodicity, periodicity. And the other sampling line is about a 20% cold length downstream of the blade trailing edge. And in the distribution of actual lutex, uh, the counterclockwise passage vortices in blue dominate lower span region near the end wall, while in higher span, um, more clockwise concentrate sh shading vortex can be observed in red, and such distribution pattern is consistent with the vortex topology shown in average field field and uh, studied by the previous study. Um, and uh, here the dissipation downstream of the trailing edge result in chaotic small scale vortices and with fully mixed spiraling patterns. And to show the aforementioned uh, periodic uh, vortex development, uh, vortex structures are extracted by the Lutex clearly without shearing and straining contamination. And sim you can see similar vortex structures uh, in two snapshots with an interval of the vortex developing period, the TV here. Yeah, it's about, it, the character frequency of it is about uh, 3,500 Hertz. Um, in further study of this periodic uh, vortex behavior, we found they characterize the fluctuation of velocity and pr pressure fields in the passage. And so the next part is about the uh, application in deep leakage flow, uh, which is an inherent secondary flow phenomenon in the tip clearance of compressor rotor blade. And the first one, the first case is a low speed large scale actual compressor rotor, which can generate a typical form of deep leakage flow under incompressible condition. Uh, the rotor was ex experimentally studied using uh, SPIV uh, in Beihang University and has also been simulated by uh, DDES method. Thus, uh, with the DDS method, uh, with the DDS results, more details can be obtained, and uh, the DDS results have been validated by comparing with the SPIV measurement. As a primary cause of the tip leakage flow and also the tip leakage vortex is the leakage jet flow generated by the pressure difference between the pressure and the suction side of the rotor blade. And under, you can see under the near stall condition, the adverse pressure gradient are higher. And the maximum of the pressure difference here is higher than that in design condition. But in near stall condition, it has shorter high speed leakage flow region in cordwise direction. And uh, here we show the distribution of rigid body rotation and pure sharing 
they vary in different operating condition. And figures in the left show that uh, the streamwise rigid rotation in the cross sections, this this stronger jet flow generates stronger concentrated tip leakage flow, tip leakage vortex under near stall condition, but it breaks down earlier in the passage flow in the in the flow passage, and uh, the chaotic broken vortices affect wider areas downstream. And, and as the shear interaction between the leakage flow and the main flow is a main formation mechanism of the tip leakage flow and uh, also the tip leakage vortex. Here we also show the flow structure using the distribution of streamwise pure shearing. And the similar evolution process of shearing flow structure can be can be found before the tip leakage vortex break down. And as in the near stall condition, the chaotic vortices affecting wider regions downstream because uh, it breaks down earlier. But the evolution process develops and ends, ends earlier under the near stall condition uh, in, compar in compared with the design condition. And the, the next feature in the evolution of tip leakage vortex is about the uh, spiraling pattern and also the spiraling compactness. And as mentioned before, the tip leakage flow generates intense and uh, concentrated tip leakage vortex just after the blade leading edge. And as it uh, develops downstream, the vortex, the vortices lose stability, stability and break down into weak and chaotic vortices. So here we use different level of lutex threshold value to extract them. And because this flow is a low speed and uh, uh, incompressible condition, the isosurface are colored just to use the value of psi, which is the abscess coordinate of the LT plan, and it can indicate the two spiral importance. So when we're using a higher threshold value, most of the chaotic small chaotic small scale vortices downstream are excluded, so only upstream concentrated vortex remains. Um, it can be found that the tip leakage vortex vortex is indicated by magenta when it just forms from the tip clearance, which means that it is stretching. Then it turns to green quickly which indicates that the spiraling pattern changes as the tip leakage vortex develops. And so when we use lower threshold value of lutex, it shows more broken chaotic vortices downstream. The chaotic broken vortices are mainly magenta, uh, which means they spiral in positive psi, or we say it is it spiral in stretching pattern. And likewise, each change of spiraling pattern happens earlier in the cordwise direction under the near stall condition. And the, the phenomenon uh, in the fixed um, in the fixed transient flow in the in the last slides can also be observed in unsteady evolution in timeline. And the spiraling pattern along the average vortex core trajectory. This is uh, the vortex core trajectory in average results, and uh, they are sh and uh, they are extracted to show in both conditions. And uh, the tip leakage flow, uh, tip leakage vortex generates near the blade leading edge with stretching positive psi pattern. You can see the magenta part. And after that, the concentrated tip leakage vortex develops and uh, keeps stable. When the tip leakage vortex breaks down, a continuous switch of the spiraling pattern occurs to the tip leakage vortex uh, with lower spiraling compactness. And in comparison, in, com and in comparison, and the spiraling pattern switches more periodically in design condition. While the much stronger unsteadiness of flow field in the near stall condition makes the spiraling pattern switch irregularly with a random lasting time. So then we test uh, the tip leakage vortex flow in a uh, more engineering flow, which is in the uh, um, transonic compressor rotor, where the flow compressibility and the shock wave should be considered. And the trans transonic 
rotor we test here is a rotor 37 from NASA and it works under a compressible condition and the influence of shockwave interaction bring complexity to the tip leakage flow. The flow fields are simulated by gas, me gas method and the total number of the structured grid is over 90 million. And uh, here we give a brief introduction of the gas method. The gas is short for a grid adaptive simulation and it's, it is a new hybrid runs LES method proposed by our group. And it considering considers the grid adaptive ability based on the Como growth energy spectrum. And it uh, directly modified the turbulence viscosity equation in the Ryan's framework. And uh, the gas method can reduce the grid resolution demands and, uh, in, in, and enhance the computational accru accuracy and uh, accelerate uh, the turbulence simulation with high fidelity. So um, then let's uh, look back to the flow field. Here we look at the tip leakage vortex topology in this transonic rotor and uh, the concentrated tip leakage vortex, vortex starts at the leading edge and when it hits, it, it meets the leading edge shock wave, the tip leakage vortex is, is going to break down. And you can see this uh, phenomenon directly from the right map. Of, it, it is a map of streak line. So, we extract the spiraling pattern along the tip leakage vortex core trajectory for instantaneous flow fields and uh, compare it with the streamwise pressure gradient. This is the streamwise pressure gradient. Now we divide the tip leakage vortex evolution into five parts um, in, stream, in streamwise direction. And in the first part, um, just like in low speed case, the tip leakage vortex forms with an actual stretching pattern uh, and uh, uh, a short and a short favorable pressure gradient here makes the makes it turns into an expansion state and uh, the tip leakage vortex turns into a compression state when adverse pressure gradient occurs in the second part then the tip leakage vortex meets the shock wave here it is the third part and uh, under the effect of strong adverse pressure gradient by the shock wave, uh, it keeps in compression state. But the tip leakage, tip leakage vortex spare, its spiraling pattern changes from damped orbital radius into a amplified radius. And after the shock wave, the pressure gradient becomes favorable and uh, thus the vortex becomes into an uh, expansion state. And finally, the tip leakage vortex lose stability and uh, the vortex core caught some random switching patterns. So the evolution of the spiraling pattern of tip leakage vortex in the transonic rotor still follows the uh, follows that in uh, a low speed one, but the compressibility and shock wave interaction make it more complex, but make it more complex. So um, that's all about our results and discussion. And uh, at last, there are some conclusions for our research. And in this study, the lutex based velocity gradient decomposition and uh, the local trace criterion in the positive data space are firstly reviewed. Um, they are together employed to analyze the typical secondary vertical flow in actual compressors. And in the about the application, in corner separation flow, the component of Lutex vector and also the LTER indication can successfully identify the conventional topology and uh, the corresponding spiraling patterns of corner separating vortices in average field, and especially find the regional distribution of vortices in transient flow fields, and it's it is the uh, unsteady condition. And uh, as well as the periodic, periodic behavior related to the vortex developing. And in the application in uh, tip leakage flow, 
The evolution of tip leakage vortex can be characterized by different rotating strengths, uh, spiraling pattern, and also the spiraling compactness. And in low speed or uh, or uh, simplified in compressible state, the important change of spiraling pattern happens when the tip leakage vortex break down. And while in transonic or a highly compressible state, uh, the switch of spiraling pattern becomes more becomes more complex, mainly because the pressure gradient, and uh, it has uh, interaction with the shock wave in the passage. Okay, that's all about uh, my presentation, and thank you for your listening. Um, do you have any question? Yes. Nobody, 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 People use uh, I know you uh, your group give the, some kind of idea uh, you vortex uh, several types you call the LTER like uh, you have four phase or five phase or something like that different yeah. uh, you know vortex type um, but your talk is still use uh, I think uh, use Lutex as a base yeah we combine uh, you give more detail analysis yeah. as I think. I just curious. Have you ever used the lambda two method or Q method? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the comparison between these. Uh, I cannot hear things. you. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, can, can you hear me? We cannot hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, Professor, uh, she leaves says he can hear me. <laughs> uh, Professor Liu, can you hear me? I can't hear you now. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I can't uh, hear you, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, answer your question. And uh, the, vortex, the comparison between different vortex identification uh, is a um, topic we study uh, about uh, one or two years ago, and uh, we've present uh, our work about the comparison between different vortex, vortex identifi identification methods two years ago. And uh, uh, actually, we use Lambda 2 and, uh, for example, Q, Lambda 2, Lambda CI, and some other um, typical methods. And uh, uh, you, you can, f you, I, I, I give this, I give this uh, slides to you. You can see that uh, here we use the Lutex to identify the um, vortex structure in corner separation flow. And uh, uh, we didn't give some other results of, the, of other vortex identification methods. And if we use Lambda 2 or Lambda CI or Q, they are uh, seriously contaminated by the shearing effect and uh, or compression stretching effect, especially in the uh, suction side of the blade, which where the shearing is very strong. So we cannot get uh, a clear um, vortex structure by lambda two or Q or lambda CI method. So uh, um, that's why we use Lutex or the components of Lutex to identify the uh, vortex structure. Right, that sounds good. Yeah, I just want yeah. to know that. Because we know Lambda 2 mainly uh, has several assumptions, uh, uh, assumption, uh, you know, in compressible flow. So I, uh, yeah. you have shock. I don't think uh, you can use Lambda 2. Yeah, Q as yeah. well in compressible flow. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes... they also yeah. share contaminated, you said. Uh, on the surface, yeah, okay. a strong share. They give very strong Q or very strong. The number two, but uh, really it's no rotation. And yeah. uh, I think, uh, yeah, also, num to assume is the uh, inviscid flow. 
So in the well, she is not very strong. Lambda two also give a good structure, but uh, when near the wall, I don't think it can give the you know good uh, you know structure, uh, correct structure. So that's yeah. why we we should use uh, new tech. Otherwise, uh, um, you know they don't know why I need that because uh, roughly for the strong vortex, uh, the topology about the semen, I think for the strong. When you talk about uh, you have stone shear and you talk about uh, the strong what what is this and the weak what is it you find a ball yes yeah. yeah. so they cannot uh, you know get a difference uh, you know distinguish the rotation and the shape so they cannot they give both big so that's the problem yeah as I say yeah, yeah this is just for education purpose before because even my group they still have questions. So why we use new text? Why? Because lambda two, lambda uh, ci, where where is similar? What is structure? Yeah, that's 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 true. But it's conditional. Yeah, in some condition it's yes, in some condition it's no. So <laughs> so yeah. I appreciate your explanation. You you because you test more real cases than we do. We don't have tools. We don't have data to test these methods. So. So really, <laughs> because I really one of our group they test different method, uh, your methods, you know. Uh, then really for the invisible flow or for potential flow, there's no difference. <laughs> yeah. not really no difference. When you get a stone shear, then you cause trouble. <laughs> so the on, on the surface you feel find a big area is the yeah strong vortex. They think it's strong. There's no vortex. They they say if we use Q method, so you get a strong vortex on the surface, something like that. Uh, that that that's a cause the problem. But uh, our group, uh, you know, is the mathematical department, so they may don't fully understand this. So <laughs> so as I said, if we look at this picture, uh, you, yeah. you can see that it's is more clear and yeah, clean. Clear. Uh, if you Q is not clean. <laughs> They all yeah, can, way strong on the surface, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Professor, I can give you. Uh, I I really agree with your opinion that the vortex, uh, the application of, of vortex identifi identification methods is conditional, and I can uh, give you an example in this picture. And you know, uh, this is a transonic rotor, and the tip yes. leakage vortex will meet uh, the shock wave generated from the leading edge, and uh, in our uh, in our practice, uh, once we use some ident vortex ident identification methods, for example, the uh, lambda two or a Q or, or something uh, or some vortex methods which contains a contamination of compressing stretching effect, because yeah. the compressing stretching effect is very strong when the uh, vortex meet the shock wave. If we yeah, if because example, that's yeah. The, yeah. High speed flow. <laughs> yeah. If, for example, if we use lambda two or Q, the uh, if we use the ISO surface to capture the uh, the structure, the vortex structure, the vortex will be cut off in near the shock wave. So it's it seems not real, <laughs> but vortex uh, uh, can bring a continuous continuous vortex structure just like this. <laughs> Maybe it I will be cut off here. <laughs> yeah. I really want to know your results compare different methods. Well, this is harder to you know persuade, but you 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 will find it. You will find yes. it. What what you can find it? You will find it in the uh, China. A lot of people use new tech, but if you yes. look at the, the in the American United States, there's really very few people use the new tech. Well, the reason is I think they never, I think, I don't think they ever do the detail analysis for some kind of, you know, strong share case. I don't think they did. They just say topology about the seminar is not a, a very meaningful and uh, you uh, you have higher, you know, CPU cost because you need to calculate eigenvalue, eigenvector. So they have some reasons. Yeah, I really appreciate uh, to explain Explain even most people left already. Yeah, yeah. still. Yeah, I, I, I know you are working with uh, uh, Dr. Lu, right? Dr. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, yeah, I, I you, we're, we're talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are the uh, assistant professor, or uh, no, no, no. What? I'm just a PhD student. Yeah, PhD student. Oh, oh no, <laughs> it did a very good work. I thought. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I think very, very, yeah, very good because you are working <laughs> in the first. That's I said in the you know <clears throat> first line. I say so. Okay. Yeah. That does say you have more experiences and uh, in the computation. I, pre I, I appreciate. It. I also I, I I'm very you know interested in this. I hope yeah you can send me some comparisons to me if it's okay. possible. So I can use it because we don't do much computation really. It's just math department. You you, you okay. understand? We only yeah develop some kind of methods, you theory theory or something something like that. We really didn't do. Comparison for this, uh, you know, complex flow. <laughs> we didn't do that, really. We we don't have condition to do that, so uh, we don't know much about that, really. So even my group, as I said, even my group. So this uh, for education purpose, you really uh, provide me some tools to persuade people. So I think that's <laughs> particular important because you know that what uh, how what's difference between the new text and the Q and the lambda two. So you know that <laughs> yeah. yeah you you did a test that you tried that, but most people don't know that yeah especially in the Western world I think the Western world I believe as my um, feeling. Uh, in like uh, in England or European, they still think of what is it uh, is what else. Most people still be new that. I think, yeah, uh, most most people be new that. And uh, some people uh, be new they should use number two, Q. Yeah, some people, <laughs> very, very few people uh, realize they should have to use new text. But uh, on the other hand, I repeat it again and again. You cannot use Q. You cannot use what is it? You cannot use Q. You cannot use number two. You cannot. That's why you when you say in some cases you get a similar structure, but apparently they, they, they when the share is very large, they cannot get a difference. <laughs> a treat share it is the vortex. If as you said, like the shock. The shock, you, you know, you, you say the stretching is very strong. They treat the stretching as a vortex. So that's the problem. Yeah, uh, compression is not stretching. In that case, compression that oh, yeah. means negative. Right. <laughs> negative. They they kill the vortex by the vortex identification methods, not 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 by the physics. <laughs> I think it is interesting. Very interesting. This is not uh, you know uh, teach. Your students are teaching our students. They, they don't know. <laughs> they don't understand this. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate that. So you, yeah, oh, you, you, you may. You, I, I hope you can send me some proof. Should this, yeah, yeah. You okay, should okay. this. Why we need to use some new text? Yeah. I know you did a more refined work, like uh, you say, oh. uh, uh, yeah, LTR something like that. Yeah, local time something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. You divided uh, several phase. Uh, yeah, several parts. Yeah, yeah. Give, give more details about what is type. And that's very, uh, yeah, very neat. Yeah, <laughs> very good. I think. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Professor Liu. Yeah. yeah thank you. And uh, Doctor uh, uh, Wang, Doctor Wang, Yi Chen Wang, <laughs> he's not here. Wang, Doctor Wang. I, I think, uh, yeah, let me say, we say the next the free or, uh, you know, open discussion, we already finished before the, uh, the, the last session. So, yeah, we, you know, uh, Doc Wang's not here. He's here. Another one said, I'm sorry, but you said you maybe send the uh, abstract late. So that's they didn't put your name. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, maybe you know, we re, we make the re, we made the registration a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, but uh, yeah, well, in in a lot of cases, the last one could be most the beautiful one. <laughs> that I could be. Actually, yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. So, so, actually, we both are going to leave it late, and we have updated the, the the last time. So, also, I have sent the updated work, updated program to you. I think no one has seen that. I know. I okay. know. That. And yeah. they yeah. just okay. late past the due date. I, I know. That. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But it's okay. But anyway, well, because Doctor Wang's not here, he's supposed to chair this all uh, online session. Yeah, I think in general, yeah, we uh, uh, our workshop, uh, yeah, going well. I think, yeah, I believe, yeah, we uh, have quite uh, almost thirty people, you know, join the meeting, and even now we have fifteen people here. So that's uh, really, yeah, a great success. I think, and also we achieve our goal. Our goal, it is, uh, you know, we, uh, inter, you know, uh, exchange ideas and uh, report uh, our uh, research work to the community. I think uh, the, that's the purpose of why we should have conference or should have workshop. This workshop, we should have more free discussions, something like that. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, I really, you know, uh, appreciate uh, all the participants and the speakers, uh, including the regular speakers and invited speakers. So, um, but uh, I hope, I hope, we, I hope more and more people, especially in Western world. Yeah, you, 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 you know that the, the last speaker, yeah, they all talk. <laughs> People don't understand. They, they got confused. So they, they don't understand why I need a new tax. M most people don't don't know. Yeah, I think uh, in England, uh, in the Europe, they still think uh, what is it? Most people. So so that's that, that's that that's probably not updated or modernized. So we hope we hope this workshop will you know play an you know, important role for the long run, long term. And more and more people yeah, understand why we must use the new text and not the other methods. And I hope yeah, more, yeah, more and more people realize that. This, this, you cannot use other methods to replace new text, no way. And uh, we also hope there's not the people, I think, in this uh, uh, meeting, is a workshop. So they not only use the new text as a tool for visualization, yeah, most of the people think it is for visualization. They use it for the, uh, you know, for the subgrade model, turbine model, and uh, artificial, you know, intelligence combined with, you know, machine learning. Yeah, I think this get, you know, broader and broader uh, and applications. I think, yeah, this is our future. So also, uh, yeah, Doc wants to not here that he wants to. Organize, uh, you know, international conference next year. So we hope more people will join the, yeah, join the conference. As I said, Suzhou is a very famous, very beautiful, very ancient uh, city in the eastern part of the um, uh, China. I think also, uh, yeah, uh, they have very, you know, uh, good in the culture. In the ancient culture and the modernized culture, so this is also a very advanced city. So I just encourage, yeah, I will encourage my students, you know, to join. Yeah, I, I will encourage. I hope, yeah, everybody can encourage your colleagues, friends, yeah, to join the meeting. But well, this meeting is about the new text, so you must use that. <laughs> Yeah, for, uh, yeah, from the uh, the last of the speakers, also we know that we have to use. We have no other choice. Yeah, so that's I said. We we hope the more and more people. Right now we only several hundred. Yeah, several hundred papers sign our work, but I hope it should be thousands or ten thousands. I hope, but eventually people realize that we have to. We have no other choice. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, well, uh, uh, Steven is here, and uh, we made uh, some uh, trouble at the beginning. 
But uh, finally, okay. we solved the problem. Everything looks smooth. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, yes, they are okay. Especially uh, thanks to all the speakers for your interesting and informative presentations and for making this webinar a huge success. And a special thanks to the workshop chairman, Professor Dr. Pro Professor Lu, and the coaches, Professor Wang and Lee, and the section in charge, organizers, Dr. Ife and Oscar Alvarez. And especially the special keynote invited keynote speakers, Achan Sima, Kozwa Matsura, and Sandra, who contributed their time to the workshop. Your hard work is greatly appreciated, doctors. Thank you once again for your invaluable contribution to the success of this conference and as well as workshop. We truly honored and to have partnered with such a dedicated team like you. And we look forward to your continued collaboration in the future of our next edition also. If possible, you can also co collaborate with us at the fourth international forum on aerospace and aeronautics, which will be held in Budapest, Hungary from the November 18 to 20, 2024. I, I know I appreciate Dr. Chakon Lu for the contribution support from three years. And I, I thank you so much, Dr. Well, thank you <laughs> for your, your organized arrangement and organization. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We learned a, a lot of mistakes from, from this year, and we will we'll show from next year. Next year, we know we are not facing any issues like uh, accommodations or etc. Okay, that sounds good. I think it sounds, yeah, really, we appreciate uh, We appreciate yeah, Thank everybody. you so much. Yeah, thank okay. you so much, Dr. And anybody else? Yeah, if uh, nobody, but I, I, I originally thought that Dr. Wang's here, uh, apparently he's not here. So, so this is, a, I know, not good time for the India, uh, not good time uh, for the U.S. as well. Now it is, uh, I think, uh, it, it is. Uh, <laughs> one, we got over that time. Uh, yeah, one am in the central time. <laughs> But yeah. in the uh, in the Pacific time, it is uh, like uh, 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 twelve almost, yeah, eleven thirty. <laughs> so this is not a good time. But we, we want to you know consider both east and the part, the west part of the world, not the not the country. <laughs> we consider them. We select this time. So I, 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 I'm sorry for this, uh, you know, time difference, which may cause a lot of, you know, trouble for our, you know, speakers or listeners. Okay. So yeah, let, uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, uh, announce uh, this is the end of uh, our uh, workshop, workshop and uh, have my best wishes to everybody. Yeah, you have a Thank you, good Dr. holiday yeah. season. We are near the Christmas and near the uh, New Year. So I <laughs> wish you have a good holiday season and I wish you get a big success in your you know, research and study. So I just say Baba to, uh, let me say, sorry, I, I didn't show my <laughs> video. I just say, well, thank you. Everybody, okay. Yes, doctor. And further see, any see assistance you and for next year, okay. Year doctor, and for and further any assistance and further any queries, you can contact me. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you. doctor. Yeah. Thank you all. Have a great day. Happy, yeah, yeah. advance, happy Christmas. Advance New Year. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, appreciate bye. all of you. And you have something enjoy, to say? Okay. Enjoy a good day. So we just say, yeah, bye bye. Uh, yeah. He's in God, is still here, right? Still here. My, Tenshi Ma said, my group is still here. <laughs> yeah. Look, 